With all the changes that's happening in the world right now, now is your industry safe? So astrology can give us a lot of insights about what's happening in the world and uh, in several of my other videos, I've also talked about how we are moving this elemental shift from earth to air. So in a very simple nutshell, what we've got is that the world actually changes elements every about 200 years. So in fact, the last time we saw a major shift was somewhere in 1842 uh, when the Industrial Revolution began. So right now, about another about 180 years later, in 2020, we are looking at yet another shift as we move into the air element. So what happens here is this. The problem is that most of us, in fact a lot of us, have careers and businesses that are rooted in the earth element. So let me explain this a little bit. When we talk about earth element, I don't necessarily mean that you buy and sell earth, okay? But you find that anything that you can see and you can touch, anything that comes in a form of a system, uh, and quite frankly, as long as your industry rose together with the Industrial Revolution, you might find that these industries will start to fade uh, as 2020 moves on and beyond. So let me explain, like one of the biggest industries that is getting affected right now is the retail industry. We've already seen big players like Sasa, Forever 21, uh, even Gap uh, has already announced that they're closing 450 stores around the world. Uh, we also see a lot of the big retail brands start to close their retail shops and move their, their uh, operations online into e-commerce. So definitely we know for sure that if you are in retail, there are going to be a large group of people who will lose their jobs. Uh, let me go through a list of what are some of the other earth traits that may be at risk. Now, if your industry is on this list, one of the things that you want to look at is can your industry modernize into an, a more air kind of element or is it possible that your industry might disappear completely? So this is a two-part series. I'm first going to talk about the industries that are at risk and uh, for those of you who are going to catch my next episode, I'm go also going to talk about which are the industries that are going to survive and are going to thrive. So let's look at which are the industries that are at risk. The first are anything that drills into the earth for resources. So what you found is that mining and petrochemical fuel industries rose uh, during the Industrial Revolution. And you'll find that there are so many of these uh, eco-friendly type groups who are campaigning against uh, these energy sources. Now, these industries are not in trouble only because people object to them, but also because they are very clearly an earth industry. They're just digging into the earth. And so you'll find uh, lots of these energy companies are looking at alternative energy right now, whether it's wind or uh, solar energy, so on and so forth. Um, and we start to talk about cars being powered by solar power. Uh, in, from 2020 onwards, you'll find that the energy market moves and technology moves very much faster so that the transition becomes a lot more possible for us. Another, another one that is going to be affected is the construction industry. Uh, construction rose very much during the Industrial Revolution together with the rise of cities, uh, with the rise of factories. We needed lots of offices and, uh, and also people wanting to live uh, in, in very concentrated areas. Uh, you'll find that once, um, once the, the, the city dynamics change, people might move out of cities and that's when construction uh, might not be as, as hot as it, as it used to be. Uh, another, uh, the other kind of category that is going to be affected are things to do with uh, accounting, compliance and audit. You'll find that most of these industries really only started rising after the Industrial Revolution simply because there, were, there was the rise of companies and organisations, uh, corporations in that sense. And therefore, the industries needed to be regulated. That meant that there were rules, there were regulations, and that's why we needed auditors and compliance people. One of the trends that is coming up is that things are moving so quickly online. For example, how are you going to regulate somebody who does makeup tutorials on Facebook? I mean, is there a rule or is there, are there laws that they have to follow? And you'll find that most of these videos are, are just being transmitted and broadcast so quickly that it might be very difficult to regulate specific industries, especially if they're online and they don't necessarily belong to any particular country. And so, which laws do we follow? And you'll find that um, as, as a lot of businesses move their operations online, it can become quite difficult to sort of set a jurisdiction on it. And uh, eventually, you may find that accounting, auditing and compliance uh, is a trade that might be at risk. Others are 
very money-oriented um, businesses such as financial planning. Uh, also, some people know them as insurance agents. Uh, you may find that investments of all sorts, be it um, even just even if you're investing in something that seems modern like cryptocurrency uh, and also HO investments like property, you may find that this idea of um, buying into a platform just for the sake of profit only can be very difficult. Uh, you'll find that when we talk about things like uh, digital currencies, for example, there is a huge difference between, um, for example, if I were to invest $10,000 into uh, like a share into a digital currency, as opposed to us building a, a platform on which people can actually use this digital currency as a way of changing our lifestyles. Uh, it is one of the reasons why WeChat and Alipay uh, and even in Singapore, GrabPay or a few other of these um, platforms that are designed to change lifestyles and communities rather than just uh, completely for a profit-only uh, objective. So you'll find that what survives can be more of a community mindset rather than a profit uh, objective. So other things could be um, in terms of worker training. Because you find that in the industrial revolution, it's important for us to see each human being as a worker. So which is one of the reasons why education, uh, in fact, private degree and education uh, started to rise also during this period because then everybody wanted degrees. If you had a degree, it meant that you could command a higher salary uh, in whatever industry you joined. So one of the, one of the things that you find is going to be affected as, um, as the world modernizes is that we, fewer and fewer people actually care whether you have a degree or not. Uh, the truth is, you, if you look at a lot of these um, top-earning YouTube stars, many of these people actually do not have the usual conventional uh, credentials in, in the topic that they are helming. So for example, your, your top makeup tutorial people actually do not have any credentials in, in makeup traditionally at all. And, so, uh, and that's one of the reasons why uh, private degrees are probably going to be at stake as fewer and fewer people take them up. The other thing that might be at stake is worker training. And uh, by that, I also want to caveat by saying that uh, there are specific types of worker training that is going to sustain because it prepares people for the online or the community or a mobile kind of uh, industry. But if they're very traditional kind of skills, uh, the kind that we, we had to do in order to take on specific jobs uh, in the traditional market, then you might find that worker training could be at risk. Uh, other things that are associated with worker training include things like human resources for the simple reason that companies are going to hire fewer and fewer people. That means jobs are going to be well, somewhat extinct, perhaps um, going out of style. And if companies are not hiring lots and lots of employees anymore, then you might find that the whole industry of human resources uh, might also be at stake. Especially as companies start to work with a lot of uh, freelancers, so it, it tends to be a lot more of like these individual contracts with, with, with individuals or small companies rather than having a huge workforce. So then if you are strictly in human resources, then you might find um, your jobs may be at stake. And of course, the last one on my list really is manufacturing, uh, especially as uh, factories really started to grow after the industrial revolution and this is a uh, traditional kind of manufacturing is also going to be at stake, right? And so uh, I understand that many people are, are going to feel worried about the industry that you're in. And I'm sure there are lots and lots of other earth industries which I have not mentioned, but you really want to think about if did your industry exist more than 200 years ago. For example, if you were in food, food is never going out of style, but certain types of food and the way in which we sell food really only came up during the Industrial Revolution. So have a good think about it uh, and also you want to catch my next episode as I talk about which are the industries that are not only going to survive but are going to really thrive uh, in the new world.